The Akatsuki vs. Warlords, a battle between two groups consisting of some of the coolest and most dangerous characters to grace both the One Piece and Naruto mangas. So who would win in an all-out brawl between these two factions? Well, by evaluating both the One Piece and Naruto mangas respectively, we can go through both groups' individual stats like AP slash durability, speed, and hacks to answer this exact question. But with intros out of the way, we can begin scaling and get to the truth of the matter. Quick disclaimer before I get into the scaling for this matchup though, I'll be using every character who has been part of each group, meaning everyone in the series who has been part of the Akatsuki version 2 and anyone who has held the position of Warlord will be included in this video. Aside from Zetsu, Team Taka, and Weevil, with the version of each character being specific to when they served under said group and not before or after. But to kick off the scaling, we'll be looking at attack potency starting with the Akatsuki, and I'm going to be keeping it brief here. This is because 8 characters who have been part of the Akatsuki scale to the Biju who are able to create and tank Biju bombs that have been calc to be able to output 64 gigatons of TNT, which is island level. These characters include Itachi, Obito, Kisame, Kakazu, Sasori, Deidara, and Orochimaru. Datara is able to one-shot the three tails with a fish bomb, Sasori is in possession of the third Kazekage puppet which is a living corpse version of the third Kazekage, Iron Sand is stated to be the Sand Village's strongest weapon which would include Shukaku. Kakazu is able to tank the two tails paw strike with no damage and is presumably the one who drew blood from it for Hidan to initiate his ritual. Pain is able to seal 8 out of 9 of Kurama's tails with the Chibaku Tensei, and Kisame is able to dominate a version 2 Killer B, on top of him already being stated to possess BG levels of chakra. Obito was controlling 6 BG at once, tanks KCM1 Naruto's Rasengan, and was no selling hits from the same Soigetsu who can block attacks from the Raikage. Itachi, while being a nerfed Edo, was able to fight alongside and match the same EMS Sasuke, who would go on to rival a KCM1 and 2 Naruto. And last but not least, Orochimaru was able to kill a fourth Kazekage, who was known to be able to brawl with Shukaku and stopped his rampages on several occasions. Also, if you think that Hiruzen being the strongest of the five Kage is not a retcon, this would also scale Oro above the fourth Raikage, who we know is stated to have Biju levels of chakra by Karn. Before I wrap the AP section up, if you're wondering why I haven't mentioned lower tier members of the Akatsuki like Konan and Hidan, that's just because their AP is really hard to pin down and they would be massively weaker in comparison to other members, rendering both their APs as a moot point to the discussion. Moving on to the Warlords and their APs though, since they all have varying levels of power, I'm going to be starting with the weaker Warlords and working my way up to the strongest. And the weakest of the Warlords is of course Buggy. Who should scale to his Buggy Bomb that was calc to be able to output 128 tons of TNT or enough energy to blast away multiple city blocks. Moving on though, most of the Warlords we see in action are in the city level range, as Crocodile is able to create standstorms that were calc to be able to output 9 megatons of TNT, Gekko Moria is able to throw punches calc to be able to output 14 megatons of TNT, Jinbei was able to one-shot Moria and physically restrain a gear 2 Luffy that beat Moria, Kuma's casual Ura shock was calced at small city level, and Luffy needed both gear 2 and 3 to even beat a clone version of him, and our last city level warlord law on Punk Hazard was able to cut through mountains with 58.9 megatons of TNT worth of kinetic energy. Our next few warlords however are far beyond city level, starting with Dofi, who while awakened was able to rival an island level King Kong gun from Gear 4 Luffy. After that we have Blackbeard who beat the dog shit out of an ace that was able to clash with the same Akainu who was just matching casual country level quakes from Whitebeard. Last but certainly not least we have Mihawk who is just straight up stated to be a stronger swordsman than Shanks who was able to evenly clash with a Whitebeard on his meds who would still have the capability to destroy the world at this point. And if you watched my last video, you'll know that this is an Earth's surface wiping feat based on a calculation of the One Piece world being 9 times larger than the sun and applying fragmentation to the feat. However, upon redoing the calculation, the new calc yielded a much higher result of 2.3 zettatons of TNT, which would make Whitebeard, Shanks, and by extension Mihawk small planet level. And if you're wondering why this calc in the Gura Gura no Mi's power would apply to Shanks, Whitebeard, or Mihawk's AP, it's simple really, as they are all confirmed Conqueror's coding users, which we know for a fact is more powerful than one Devil Fruit. As a prime Whitebeard, Kaido, Gear 5, Luffy, and any other Devil Fruit users rely on their hockey to win rather than their Devil Fruit. With Kaido even saying Roger, someone with no Devil Fruit, transcended everyone including the likes of a prime Whitebeard who had his Devil Fruit and hockey but still chose to use hockey in their clashes. So just because we don't see these hockey clashes destroying the planet does not mean they don't scale to Whitebeard's Devil Fruit powers. Since it should be common knowledge in 2023 that AP does not equal DC. Also I didn't mention this before but as a 
really quick note, I'm not going to be talking about each character's individual durability in this matchup for the simple fact that this video is already going to be super long and it's not really relevant to the outcome as none of these characters I've mentioned for either group has durability any greater than their AP. So this matchup will ultimately come down to who's faster and who has the better AP slash hacks. And speaking of hacks, that's exactly what we're going to be discussing next, this time starting with the Warlord. And I'll be going in the same order as AP for simplicity's sake. Buggy ate the Barra Barra no me, a Paramecia type devil fruit that allows the user to split their own body into pieces and control said pieces however they wish. In addition to this, the user also becomes immune to all slashing attacks, similar to Luffy's immunity against blunt force attacks. Next up we have Crocodile who ate the Suna Suna no me, a Logia type devil fruit that gives a user the ability to become and manipulate sand, which as a result also allows Croc and other Logia users to let attacks pass through them harmlessly so long as their opponent doesn't possess water or hockey. Moving on to our next warlord, we have Gekko Moria, who ate the Kage Kage no Mi, a Paramecia type devil fruit that gives the user the ability to manifest and control shadows of living creatures, including their own as a physical and tangible form. And Moria can even consume these shadows to amp his strength. Following Moria though, we have Boa Hancock, who is one of the few individuals in the One Piece universe to wield armament, observation, and conqueror's hockey, giving her stat amplification, precog, and fear hacks respectively. Boa, like most of the warlords, also ate a devil fruit, with hers being known as the Love Love Fruit. This is a paramecia type devil fruit that allows a user to manipulate the emotions of love, lust, or adoration to transform opponents into stone, which she can then easily crush. Right after Bo, we have Bartholomew Kuma, who on top of being a cyborg and having the ability to shoot light beams, ate the pawpaw fruit. The pawpaw fruit is a paramecia type devil fruit that allows the user to push virtually anything they've touched into paw shaped bubbles and send them flying at high velocity, meaning Kuma can even use this ability to BFR opponents for a win, which is shown in Sabaody when he sends each of the straw hats to their desired locations for the two year time skip. Moving on though, our next warlord Jinbei, unlike most other warlords, doesn't use or have any devil fruit powers and instead relies on his fishman karate, as well as observation and armament hockey, which like I said with Boa grants Jinbei stat amplification as well as precog. Also for those who don't know, Jinbei's fishman karate is a form of durability negation, as Luffy, someone with hockey himself and immunity to blunt force trauma, is still able to be damaged by Jinbei's attacks. This is due to the fact that fishman karate uses the power of water in the atmosphere to send shock waves to impact the water inside of an opponent's body. And for those who need a quick elementary school lesson, the human body is made up of 60% water. Up next after Jinbei, we have Doflamingo, who ate the Ito Ito no Mi, a paramecia type devil fruit that gives the user the ability to create and manipulate strings that Doflamingo can then use to control people by attaching said strings to their spine similar to puppetry. Offensively, the strings can be used to cut through any matter, such as a body part or weapon, and the strings can also be used to connect to the clouds, thus providing aerial transportation. Skipping ahead though, one of the last warlords, Law, ate the Api Api no Mi, a paramecia type devil fruit that grants the ability to manifest a spherical space in which the user can manipulate the orientation, movements, and physical configuration of anything and anyone themselves included, which as a byproduct allows Law to switch people, places, and objects in his room at will almost like teleportation which Law has used in a team setting in an extremely effective manner, which will come in handy in this matchup. This fruit also grants Law durability negation, as not only can he literally displace an opponent's heart in an instant, but he can also attack other internal organs with his Gamma Knife. Forging ahead though, our second to last Warlord, Marshall D. Teach or Blackbeard, ate the Yami Yami no Mi, a Logia type devil fruit that allows the user to create and control darkness at will. And said darkness also possesses the unique properties of gravity as it consumes and crushes anything caught in Teach's range with the ability known as Black Hole. This ability also lets Blackbeard nullify the powers of Devil Fruits completely, which means in a cross first equalization setting, Teach can nullify the power of any Jutsu. Blackbeard like Bo and Shinbei also has access to Observation and Armament Hockey, which just like them also grants Blackbeard stat amplification and precognition to a certain degree. Rounding out the group though, we last but certainly not least have Mihawk, who unlike most of the Warlords, not only has access to all three types of hockey, but he also seemingly possesses their advanced stages, granting him durability negation through advanced armament and conqueror's coding, as well as future sight with advanced observation hockey, granting him much better precognition than standard observation hockey. With the warlords out of the way though, it's time to go over the Akatsuki members individual abilities and hacks, starting with the leader Pain. And for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to be talking about the powers of Tendo Pain slash the Devapath of the Renegon, which grants the user the ability to manipulate a 
attractive and repulsive forces of objects and people. The Deva Path also grants another ability called Chibaku Tensei, which allows the user to create a huge makeshift terrestrial body from all of the surrounding materials that is attracted to a black sphere released by this technique. With the attractive force of the technique being so strong that it's capable of physically restraining as well as sealing Biju. Next up for hacks, we have Itachi, who with his manga Kyo can use Sukuyomi and Amaterasu, two instant win techniques that bypass conventional durability. That's not all though, as Itachi can also use Izanagi to avoid death and respawn, as well as Izanami, which is another pretty much instant win technique. Itachi also has access to base genjutsu that doesn't even require an opponent to have chakra for him to use, and I don't even think I I need to explain the Tosca Blades for those who know. <coughs> GG. Next up for abilities though, we have Obito who possesses Kamui, which is a pocket dimension he can use to drop people in and become intangible similar to a Logia, rendering Obito pretty much impossible to hit for those who don't possess Kamui. And just like Itachi, also possesses Izanagi in both eyes, therefore if he does end up dead somehow, he can easily just respawn. Kisame with his Samehata has the ability to absorb pretty much any energy with versus equalization, with this ability growing even more more potent when Samehara is fused with Kisame. Also, Kisame is not just a user, but a master of water style, as we've seen him pull off some of the greatest water style feats we've seen in this series so far, like spitting out an entire lake of water into an empty canyon, or creating a giant water dome that moves with the user. Orochimaru has mid to low regeneration, giant summonings, all five changes in chakra nature, and the ability to paralyze anyone he's bitten with a curse mark. However, his best ability is his use of the Edo Tensei, which he can use to summon a nerfed Edo Hashirama and Tobirama that also scale to beat you level, increasing the numbers of the Akatsuki side even more. Sasori is a master puppeteer with thousands of puppets who have weapons laced in poison that almost instantly put an opponent into a death state. Plus the Kazekage puppet who I mentioned earlier has iron sand that can also make giant geometrical shapes coated in the same poison. Sasori also has nigh immortality through his swapping of hearts through different puppets, though this can obviously be circumvented if the opponent is able to destroy all of his puppet bodies. Gator uses clay to make simple and varying explosives that he can even ride on and use to aerial bomb. With the best of these bombs being called called C4, which is able to create explosives so strong they destroy an opponent on a cellular level. Kakuzu has incredible enhanced physical strength that he can amp even further with his diamond armor, almost like armament hockey, and he also possesses the ability to use hearts that can act autonomously from his main body and shoot out four of the five elemental ninjutsu. Konan uses paper ninjutsu to act as multiple tools such as spears, shuriken, and bombs, and finally Hidan is nigh invincible to any blunt force damage due to his immortality, and he can also use a ritual jutsu which allows him to harm other Others through himself by ingesting their blood. Moving on though, it's time to talk about the most important topic to this discussion, speed. And we'll be continuing with the Akatsuki, whose lower tier members like Kakuzu, Deidara, and Konan scale to lightning speed via this feat of Hidon, the admitted slowest member of the Akatsuki, keeping up with a Kakashi that was able to intercept lightning at Mach 2225, or almost two times faster than lightning. And faster members of the Akatsuki, such as Pain and Sasori, are scalable to light speed, as Pain's Shinra Tensei is a literal gravity wave that that moves at the speed of light, and Sasori has attack speed comparable to Darui's laser circus, which is stated by the data book to move at light speed. The Akatsuki speed doesn't peak there, however, as characters like Kisame, Obito, and Itachi all vastly upscale from base killer B, who in this calc was able to intercept the Raikage at 118 times faster than light via direct feats of combating B and scaling chains that include KCM Naruto, who was seen moving at the same speed as base killer B on multiple occasions. Segwaying into the warlords and their speed, though, lower tier warlords such as Buggy and Croc scale to East Blue and Alabasta Luffy, respectively, who has been calced to be able to move at hypersonic speeds and has scaling to other characters like Sora who has his own hypersonic calc. After Buggy and Croc though we have mid tiers such as Mori, Akuma, Boa, and Jinbei who scale to a much faster gear 2 Luffy who can fight at Mach 6710 as a result of the gear 2 multiplier stacking from the Sky Pia Zoro calc. And higher tier warlords such as Doflamingo and Law would upscale from this speed massively since Luffy would obviously undergo two years of training before Dress Rosa, where Luffy is shown to be relative to both Doflamingo and Law on multiple occasions. And while I know a lot of One Piece fans will try to bring up feats of Luffy dodging laser fire pre and post time skip to try to discredit the scale and say Luffy is faster than light, this is irrelevant to me as not only has there never been any faster than light calcs for said feats, but even if there were they would only classify under reaction speed feats and don't scale to Luffy's combat speed since to put it simply just because I can perceive a car traveling at 40 miles per hour from a distance and dodge it does not mean I can fight as fast as the car moves. 
And as another example, it's the same thing with a baseball. Just because Major League Baseball players can perceive a pitch traveling at 80 miles per hour and hit the ball does not mean they can fight Mike Tyson at 80 miles per hour. It's just simply illogical. But to round out the speed scaling with top tier warlords starting with Mihawk, you can easily scale him to at least 45 times faster than light since via his title, he would still be superior to the likes of Zoro, who was able to blitz a hybrid Kaida, who while in base was able to swing his Thunderbuckle at 9 times faster than light and would go on to get at least 5 times stronger and faster than this since he was able to go toe to toe with a gear 2 Luffy who cliffed Kaido's base with his own earlier. And Blackbeard should also scale to this speed considering he was able to keep up with in Scarshanks who we know even to this day is considered to be a rival to Mihawk by Oda himself. But with both groups being scaled, we can now get into the outcome and evaluation of this matchup. And while I'd love to sit here and go through individual matchups with parallels like Dofi vs. Sastry or Jinbei vs. Kisame, however, that's not what I'm going to be doing today, and I'm simply going to cut straight to the chase and say that if the Akatsuki and Warlords were to come to blows in, let's say, an open field, all of the Warlords aside from Blackbeard and Mihawk would get blitzed and killed right off the bat as most of the Warlords, despite having really good abilities, possess blatantly inferior stats across the board to the Akatsuki and can easily be taken out by Kisame's Water Jutsu. But I also think the slower members of the Akatsuki like Hidan, Konan, Deidara, Kakuzu, and Pain would all be killed in the process as well. Which would make the fight Itachi, Obito, and Kisame versus Mihawk and Blackbeard, with both Blackbeard and Mihawk possessing the AP necessary to kill the upper tier Akatsuki. So the Warlords win because Mihawk and Blackbeard carry, right? Well, unfortunately, AP and durability aren't everything and you have to be fast enough to even land attacks in the first place, which is where the superior speed and hacks of the upper tier Akatsuki members come into play, as not only are Obito, Kisame, and Itachi's combat speeds all scalable to 118 times faster than light, which absolutely dwarfs Blackbeard and Mihawk's speed of 45 times faster than the light. But as I also mentioned before, Itachi has four instant win techniques in Amaterasu, Sukuyomi, Izanami, and the Totsuka Blade that negate their ability, as well as an instant respawn technique in Izanagi even if Mihawk or Blackbeard could land a hit on him. Combine that with the fact that Obito can use Kamui to BFR Mihawk and the fact that Kisame can just drown Blackbeard using standard water style means that even though Itachi, Obito, and Kisame are at a massive disadvantage in power, speed and hacks are what ultimately dictated the outcome of this matchup and why the Akatsuki vs. Warlords is not even close. With the video wrapped up though, I would like to quickly ask that you hit the subscribe button as I have an abundance of versus battle and scaling content on my channel that I'm sure you'll enjoy if you like this video. With all of that being said though, I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are, and until next time.